everyone welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here my name is becca and today is the start of a new reading vlog it is currently thursday uh in the early afternoon and i'm pretty much finished with my work for the day i do have some other things that are happening later but pretty much the end of my work week so i wanted to talk about what i'm reading and talk about my plans for reading this weekend. I'm currently reading Girls of Paper and Fire. This is one of the uh, James Patterson Presents novels, which surprised me too, yeah. I'm currently on page 152 out of, I think, 400-ish, yep. So close to getting to halfway through. I'd really like to finish this in the next two days. So today and Friday, I would like to finish. I'm really liking it so far. It's basically about this world where there are three different type of casts. So there's the paper cast, which regular humans, the uh, steel cast, which are demons who have partial animal features, like maybe they'll have um, like cat ears or cat eyes and something like that. And then the highest cast is the moon cast, which uh, are demons that have more animal features, fully demon, with whole animal demon features, such as horns, wings, or fur on a humanoid form, and complete demon capabilities. The top of the cast is the moon cast, the bottom is paper, so humans, and it's about this girl who has gold eyes, even though she's of the paper cast, and a uh, general from, you know, the king's army hears rumors about her eyes and considers it to be a lucky thing and decides to forcibly remove her from her home and go to the kingdom or go to the palace to serve as a paper girl for the king, so basically a concubine. So yeah, that's what the setup is currently. I still have no idea how this is going to go. Like, is there going to be a revolution? Is she just going to stick with it? Like, I have no idea. Not a single idea. But I'm really excited to find out. I'm really liking it so far. I feel like it was very easy to get into the world and there's been no, like, world dumping, which I appreciate. And I'm really excited. It's definitely giving me Memoirs of a Geisha vibes because, you know, in Memoirs of a Geisha, Geos forcibly removed from her home to become a maid and possibly a geisha. Very similar. But yeah, it's very good. Liking it so far. I'm also listening to A Promised Land by Obama, which is his newest memoir. I'm not that far and I actually kind of forgot about it this week, so I really need to start listening to that again because I'm not going to get any renewals on that audiobook because there's a lot of holds. So I definitely want to get a good chunk of that listened to this weekend, and then I would like to start uh, one of the many arcs that I stupidly downloaded because I thought that I would have time to read them. Uh, quite a few books are being released in the beginning of February, so maybe... I don't know, there's so many choices. I kind of want to read, like, some contemporary, so I might read Love is a Revolution by Renee Watson. It's a YA contemporary romance, I think, so one out of a ridiculous amount of choices. But anyway, so that's where my reading is, is this weekend. As for plans, like I said, today's Thursday afternoon. I have to leave in about an hour because I have my first physical ther therapy appointment for my back, and I'm kind of nervous, kind of terrified, but hopefully, <laughs> you know, I start to get better. And then Friday, I have no plans. Saturday, I have my personal book club. We will be discussing Felix Ever After, which was phenomenal. And then Sunday, again, I don't have really any plans. So there. Hopefully, be able to get a lot of reading in this weekend. I tried to film a reading vlog last weekend, but it's been so long since I've done it that I've fallen out of practice and was barely um, updating. And then... I think it, like I was going to do a long weekend because Monday was Martin Luther King Jr. Day and I had the day off and I was like, make it a three-day weekend vlog and <laughs> did not pick up the camera once on Monday. So here's my second try. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for um, hopping on to this vlog. Remember to subscribe and let's get into the reading vlog.
Hello everyone. It's been a few hours. Had dinner. Washed my hair. <laughs> I wanted to update about my day. I had my physical therapy appointment. So I'm currently watching a Reagan vlog. She uploaded a vlog yesterday? Today? I don't know. Close to an hour long. So I'm going to watch that and read. I read about 30 pages before I went to my physic my appointment and I haven't read since then so I'm going to pick it up now. Oh also there is one other thing that I wanted to talk about. So if you are not new to my channel you may have seen my uh, one of my most recent videos was just my uh, simplified 2020 or hmm, 2021 reading journal. You would have seen my eGalley page spread for uh, 2021 arcs and uh, earlier when I was like I need to read an arc or something and I might want to do that this week weekend I just want to show you what my e-galley spread is looking like and you may recall that I said I don't think I'm gonna need two pages but you never know and there you can see it is almost an entire page long <laughs> Ah, it's so ridiculous. It's like basically when I find myself at work for like 20 to 30 minutes and I'm just like, I have nothing to do right now. And I just go on Edelweiss and just scroll and scroll and download <laughs> and requ request all of the arcs. Some I'm definitely interested for. Some... I'm excited because I hadn't heard about them and I'm like finding new books and some I'm just like I know the author's name so <laughs> uh. but yeah so there are quite a few arcs or books that are coming out in mm, February so if I want to read them anytime soon I should probably do that soon and so I'm thinking the options of what I'm going to choose between the Kindest Lie by Nancy Johnson, A History of What Comes Next by Sylvan Neuville, The Project by Courtney Summers, Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers, The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna, Love is a Revolution by Renee Watson, and Good Neighbors by Sarah Langan. These all come out February 2nd, so they're the ones that I would need to um, focus on first, oh, I missed one, um, Meet You in the Middle by Devin Daniels. So I'm thinking after I finish uh, Girls of Paper and Fire, I might want something um, contemporary or romance, like instead of reading another fantasy novel or something like that. So leaning towards Love is a Revolution or maybe The Project by Courtney Summers. Apparently it's about a cult and that sounds really interesting to me right now, probably because I just finished Criminal Minds. Yep, just watched the last episode that was on Hulu, and I'm curious if they keep going or if that was the last episode, but whew. Mm. Right in the feels. I'm gonna stop talking to you so I can read and watch Reagan. I have officially made it to page 214. I am over halfway through, and I am really loving it so far still really interested to see where it's going. I'm getting a kind of special snowflake vibe, which I'm okay with. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, loving this right now. Do have to switch to the ebook version though, because during my physical therapy appointment, we discovered my most comfortable position, which is basically the fetal position. And it's very hard to hold a physical book while staying in that position. So, I'm reading the ebook because it's a lot easier to just hold on to my phone. I'm probably going to take my meds, turn the lights off, and just read a little bit more on my phone before I go to sleep. And I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. I've started doing this thing where I set timers on specific apps because I waste too much time on my phone. Which has been really nice. Um, and I also am starting this thing where your phone can be put like into wellness mode or whatever 
from whatever specific time, it was automatically set from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., which was like, yeah, sounds good. And so currently, um, my phone is in all, like, grayscale, which is really interesting. Um, <laughs> so I think I'm gonna, when I, um, edit this video, I'm probably gonna do the last clip make it in a grayscale because that's what I was seeing when I was filming it. I really like it because it's helping me be more mindful of my phone usage. I'm gonna go to sleep now. I want to update my reading. I am getting closer to the end. Physical therapy in half an hour and I'm just reading a little bit before then. I want to talk about how I'm feeling about this book though. I like the world. I like the magic system what we know of it so far and I like most of the characters or the characterizations of the characters. I don't love the setup with the whole paper girls, eight girls every year being prostitutes, being selected to be prostitutes for the king. Just like I'm not finding it very logical. The setup of that, I don't know. I also don't love some of the writing. Like, for example, I don't know how many times now the main character has had tears coursing down her face. I mean, like, I get the visual. You can use some other descriptive language if you really need that visual. It makes me think of that one book series that I can't think of what it's called by. I think it's by PC Cast. Uh, about, like, the vampires. I don't know. I'll try to find the title of what it is and put it up. Uh, somewhere on the screen, but it reminds me because I felt like that book that series was trying to have a very adult theme But the characters came off as like ridiculously Unrealistic teenagers because I don't know like the author doesn't remember what it's like to be a teenager I feel like I'm kind of getting the same vibe from this like they're trying to have this very adult theme of you know servicing the king but writing the characters younger than they actually are or what the author perceives as what a teenager or a young teenager should be like i don't know if it's yeah our, our main character is 17 and then like her love interest is 19 years old but i don't know the way that their thoughts are like so much younger and so i don't know and the one character who's the youngest of the paper girls aoki who's like 16 she reminds me so much of one of the characters in that book series because there's like one character in that who I'm just like, this is not a real person. Nobody talks like that. There is no teenager who is 16 who thinks or talks like that. And so I don't really love that. I also, I mean, I should expect it because every teen fantasy is a series now. There's no standalones, which drives me crazy because I can't, I don't like series. I don't like them because I never finish them. But anyway, don't like where this one is going because to me it feels like it's going straight into a rebellion to throw the king you know overthrow the king and like every other teen fantasy it's actually reminded me a bit like of red queen uh by victoria aveyard which i absolutely hated that book <laughs> although for very different reasons i feel like the reason i hated uh red queen is because of the whole relationship love triangle thing whereas this actually has a decent relationship in it all or beginnings of a relationship anyway but i'm getting the vibe of you know going to train with certain people in the kingdom uh someone ending up being kind of special then you know rebellion you know it's exactly the same setup as the red queen except for the fact that our special snowflake in the red queen series isn't supposed to have those powers well i mean i guess she's not either so yeah <laughs> it's the same exact setup i'm i'm joking of course it's not exactly the same but it's very similar it's so similar that it's making me think of that but this has better characters and that's that's pretty much the only reason why i'm still reading this because i'm liking the characters except for the horrible writing of certain characters so and i guess i like that it's more unique in the because it's more of like an Asian, Chinese, it's more like Chinese, you know, mythology kind of, just not a white person writing it. So there you go. That, that's how I feel so far. <laughs> I'm reading Girls of Paper and Fire, and I feel like I just came across a direct quote from Memoirs of a Geisha. Falling in love is the most dangerous thing women like us can do. 
feel like that's exactly word for word from Memoirs of a Geisha. I'm gonna Google it and see what I come up with. Good news, I did not find it directly quoted from Memoirs of a Geisha. The same, the same sentiment, you know, like their courtesans not meant to fall in love with whatever, whatever. But I'm just saying, like, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I finished. I'm giving it three stars. <sighs> Things I liked about this book. I liked the uh, friendships. I felt like they were very believable and they like had their ups and downs as regular as usual friendships do. So that was good. I liked the um, concept of throwing, overthrowing the king by a, like a woman overthrowing the king, being the one to overthrow the king, and the female empowerment of it. I like that. Things that I felt were really lacking in this book though, like, and like earlier I said that there's not a lot of world dumping and that's fantastic, which it totally is, but I feel like I barely know anything about this world. So I like, I'm hoping there's more about the world in the second book. Also, this book is 400 pages and it doesn't need to be. It could have easily cut out 100 pages, maybe more. Another thing, the romance, which is the female-female romance. I do feel like it was, and I hate the whole term insta-love because like it's a 400 page book. What do you expect? But <laughs> I didn't find it very believable or that it is a lasting relationship i mean in real life as well when people go through like dramatic life changing events together their relationships don't usually last when they have regular life events you know i felt like there was a lot lacking in character development i think there's like pretty good groundwork on the main character but not with the love interest who is a very important character, not with any of the other characters, um, even the king, like, I felt like there need to be, there, and I think that also falls into, like, the world building and why he's king and why his ancestors were king. There needs to be more, because I get, like, there was a war, the, what do they even call it? A very specific name for the night war, like, that is such a very interesting name for a war, and I have no idea why it's called that. And then, um, you know, with the different castes and demons, I just feel like there should be more about them. And I, you know, I <laughs> like I, I don't, I, I just need more, you know? I need more development, less filler and fluff. Not that there's a lot of fluff in here. This book does tackle very difficult things. You know, they're trigger warning for sexual abuse, rape, physical abuse, emotional abuse, all of the abuse. And I also feel like there needed to be more when how the girls in this book are coping with all of this abuse because they feel like i mean it was shown a little bit with the different characters like hiding how they're feeling and then eventually you know revealing that they are pretty messed up about this but then there's the one character who thinks that she's in love with the king which i think is a very good example of grooming and how that can really affect a survivor of you know sexual abuse so i I 100% see that and felt like that was a good uh, illustration of the character. But yeah, so I'm a little disappointed in this book. I'm, I am feel like there has to be more world building in the second book. So I am going to read it or okay, I'm going to pick it up. I don't know that I'm going to read through it because if I don't get any more world building in the first 100 pages of that book, I'm going to DNF it because oh also I you know talked earlier about the whole special snowflake thing which also I am somebody who enjoys the special snowflake trope like I like a chosen one you know but I didn't like the way that this was set up because it's just like something you know like it's just like I feel like in some ways you can you can do it well and I don't think that this did it well because also I mean she doesn't have and this is kind of like a spoiler I guess she doesn't have any special powers or anything but the, the way that she became the special snowflake. I'm just like, that's not believable at all. I'm going to insert a little spoiler spoilery clip here. So if you plan on reading this book, skip, okay? The fact that when Ren has to go home because of her mother dying and she therefore cannot be the one who kills the king and they're like, Yuli, you have to be the one to kill the king. She's not a warrior. She can barely fight. 
that is no way believable and them expecting her to be able to do that and even them trusting her to fulfill this part of the plan like no no way i that was 100 percent unbelievable um the way that it played out however made more sense as lee um like is severely injured and someone else throws a knife into the king's eyeball and then she's able to rip it out and stab him a bunch i get that but for the warriors it's just like yeah it's your, yeah you can do it no no that doesn't make sense oh yeah <laughs> i'm done with this book <laughs> because i've had so many issues with this book i kind of just like i don't even want to own it anymore even though like i love the cover also like i'm hope i i'm definitely gonna read the second book because i need to know if they fix things the freaking gold eye thing like it's completely un like it's the reason why she becomes a paper girl and then it is never addressed again so okay i'm done now done talking about this book done i what time is it i'm not gonna pick up another book tonight i don't think maybe i will i might start one of the arcs because i want to lay down and try to get comfortable because of my back and i'm gonna need to read an ebook so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna read an ebook and i'll let you know either later tonight or tomorrow what i decide to read okay also tomorrow i'm having my book club discussion of felix ever after and i'm so excited good night hello everyone uh it is now saturday morning i have been working on some work things and kind of reading a little bit so last night i did end up deciding when uh, Love is a Revolution by Renee Watson that comes out in February 2nd. This is the first book that I've read by her. I've got book club in a couple of hours, so I'm just going to be doing some of my morning routine and then reading for the rest of the morning. Hi everyone, it is Sunday afternoon, close to evening now. I just haven't been vlogging or reading much today, so I figured that I would just uh, end the vlog now and kind of just wrap up what I read this weekend and also talk about how I'm feeling and what I think might be some changes that I'll be making to my channel. So let's start with what I read. I finished Girls of Paper and Fire. I got 30% into Love is a Revolution by Renee Watson and I think it's pretty fun so far. It's just about a girl who uh, wants to fall in love for the first time and she's also struggling with a lot of other things that are related to like her self-confidence and self-esteem and um, her family issues and just things like that. So I'm really enjoying that. I'm going to keep reading it. And I also did get a good chunk of um, A Promised Land by Obama uh, listened to this weekend. I've been kind of just like listening to it before I go to bed and also just like while I'm doing other things that I don't need to pay attention to. And I think I'm going to be really sad when it's over because I just really enjoy listening to him talk. So yeah, those are the books that I have read this weekend. As for the future of uh, my channel, channel, nothing too crazy. I think, you know, last, the end of last year, I was really excited about having, you know, seasonal content and the, uh, you know, October, November, December my, is my favorite time of year, my favorite three months of the year. Uh, so I think that's just why I was really excited and I wanted to post multiple times a week. And now that um, January is here and I'm like, starting physical therapy, going through a lot at work right now, just a lot of things are happening right now and I feel like two videos a week is too much for me. So I think I'm definitely probably going to drop it down to one video a week again. This is actually like the second vlog that I've tried to film in the past few weeks and I just, I feel like I'm a little burnt out from like just doing so much in, in December. So just want to cut back um, and I think that's going to be better for me in the long run because I think if I were to kind of like force myself to make 
multiple videos a week that I would get burnout faster and then I would just end up giving up completely. So I think this will be better for the future of my channel and my enjoyability of it. So that is going to be it for this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed my ranting about Girls of Paper and Fire, which was just a wild ride. I had heard so much about that book and so many people were really excited about it. And then I actually went on Goodreads about like maybe when I had like a fourth of the book left. And like there were so many people who were just like really disappointed in this book. So I'm really hoping the second one just fills in those holes, but yeah. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in a new video soon. Bye.